Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, starting with these words. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We could do a whole Mother's Day sermon right there, couldn't we? I think I heard my mom say that several times. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we reply with, thanks be to God. Oh, Mother's Day, friends. It has been a morning already. I've got salt down my face from the tears and all the stuff going on this morning. I was up there on screen in three different pictures. My, my sister's family was up there with a picture that had my mother and me from first grade. What my sister had cut out of that picture is her in it because she's in preschool at the time. And in that picture, she has her finger stuck up her nose, actually. And I went, Jen, come on, give them the whole picture right here. Come on. Luckily, she is in Cabo this weekend, so I don't have to embarrass her, but you all know the story now, okay? Second was with with my in-laws right back here, right? I was in there, and I was like, look at that handsome guy. He was so skinny and young and all the stuff. It was for my wedding. And then there was a picture, at the last one there, with me and my wife and son and my mother, my mother who passed away seven years ago. I want to tell you a story this morning about my mother, but it starts with me because I was 13 years old in this story. Now, you need to know something about my father's side of the family. My dad's right back there. Wave, dad, everyone. There he is. Yep, yep. Handsome guy. Give him a big round of applause. Absolutely. My dad has a huge family. So his mother and father had eight kids, okay? My dad, of course, was the best out of all of them, right? And out of all those kids, they had a ton of kids themselves. And then there were generations that had more kids and more kids and more kids. So there's a lot of great, great, great stuff going on here in this family. And, you know, we're from farmland, Indiana. So people get married early or they just get pregnant early, right? And so there's just a lot of people in the family. You can ask dad about those stories later, okay? And we like to have these giant, giant family gatherings for holidays because, of course, out of all these hundred people on my dad's side of the family, we all lived within 15 minutes of one another, okay? So we'd have these giant, giant family gatherings, okay? And this one, it was either Memorial Day or Fourth of July, I forget which one, but in Indiana, when you're 13, you go through this buffet line and you just pile food on top of one another, just big piles and plops of it. It doesn't matter if it's, it's not organized at all. It all just kind of flows in to one another and all of it's carbohydrates anyway, so it doesn't matter, okay? It's all fried carbohydrates covered with cheese, okay? All on top of one another. I got this giant plate that I'm carrying around and then in my other hand, I've got, I don't know where they got these giant plastic cups, okay? But college students would love the size of these cups, okay? Just giant, full of ice and water, okay? And so I am trying to get from the buffet line to a table, right? Now, the other thing you need to know about me is that I was the runt in all the cousins, 
my age. Okay? They were cool, and I read 12 chapters of the Bible every night. Understand the difference here? Okay? I was this high, right? I didn't hit my growth spurt until like junior, senior year of high school, right? And I shot up to where I'm at right now. And I weighed like 20 pounds, okay? So they were all the cool ones, and I was this just dorky, tiny, little 13-year-old. So anytime I was at these family gatherings, I was already self-conscious, okay? So I'm carrying my big, my big plate, my big cup, the whole thing, right? And they have this tent outside with long ropes, right, going into metal pegs in the ground. And, of course, I trip, And as my foot hits and I can feel myself going up in the air, I have no concern for my safety. I have no concern for my bodily harm. What I care about in this moment is being absolutely embarrassed and mortified. As the food comes up into me, as I'm coming at this giant pile, right? And out of the corner of my eye, I can see my mother begin to come out of her seat. And as she comes out of her seat, here comes this phrase, my baby. (laughs) Oh, I haven't even hit the ground yet, friends. The food is still coming up at me. And I hear this screech. And as I hit the ground, all of the ice hits the metal peg of the tent. And all my mother hears is all of this crunching as I hit the ground. And the next piece is this wild animal noise coming out of my mother. And as I hit the ground, I don't really fully hit My mother is sweeping me up in her arms. I am swooshed up. And she's screaming and yelling and all of her momness is coming out right now. And before I know it, in like two and a half seconds, I am off the ground and in a house with her literally shaking me going, Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm yelling literally yelling back at her, Mom, I'm fine except for you. (sighs) I had some other words that happened after that. They're not church words, okay? (sighs) I share that story on this Mother's Day because I want you to walk out of here today knowing that there is a God who loves you just like that, who sees you even before you know you're falling, who sees the trouble that you are in and calls out across the heavens, my baby, and is swooping in and grabbing you in these giant divine arms And has you no matter what. Who is in your corner. Who's got you. Who will walk alongside of you. Who will stand out in front of you when you need a shield. Who no matter what narrative is going on in your brain and heart. About your life circumstances sees you even as the mess is taking place. You and I have what John 14 here calls an advocate. This is beautiful Greek word called paraclete. This paraclete has so many meanings. This advocate, the one who stands beside, the one who comes alongside, counselor, comforter. All of these beautiful words that I think get summed up in this one. Mama, the one who has me no matter what. 
Now, of course, I have lots and lots of meaning wrapped up in this story of mine, right? I mean, there's my 13-year-old self who had lots and lots of thoughts about this, right? Oh, I was so embarrassed. I did not want to go back out and face all of my cool cousins because not only had this situation unraveled, I have food. My mother has food from head to toe, that plate went all over me. My mom just swooped me up and grabbed a hold of me, and whew, we were a mess. We were an absolute wreck. And yet, as I mentioned at the beginning, my mother has been dead for seven years. And in those seven years, do you know that I think of this story all the time? Because it wraps up for me so many things that I love about my mother. She really was that dramatic. You can ask my dad about that later, okay? Anytime a situation would kind of unravel like that, she, she, um, all of her momness would come out, okay? And it didn't matter. It didn't matter what anyone thought. She was going to be mom, always. She saw me even when I didn't see myself. She knew things about my future that I hadn't even imagined yet. She looked at me about a week before she died, and she looked at me, and she goes, I was associate pastor at a church at the time, she goes, it's time. It's time to go and be a senior pastor. A year later, I was here at Grace. There's things that God sees about you and I that we have not yet imagined for ourselves. In the beauty of it all, and even in the mess. And when it's all wrapped up, these memories, these stories, this faith, this trust become something just like John 14 is. I am in you. You are in me. My love is in you. Our love is all wrapped up together as our advocate God looks out and comes swooping us up. And sometimes we go, I am fine. And God goes, I've got you anyways. Amen.